If you crack first, Dave, it won't make you any less of a man. I'm nowhere near cracking. Neither am I, my friend. Oh, Dave. My friend. Oh, Matthew, what is it now? For God's sake, no one's smoking, okay? But, but nothing! You know what we need around here is an anti-whining ordinance. So just sip your sniveling little lip and all your skinny ass out of her! Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. This is going to be the last video I produce, I guess, this week before I go to the hospital and my wife and I have our third child. should be tomorrow. I've actually lined up six days worth of content to roll out on the channel. A couple of three video days, mostly two videos per day. A lot of the stuff that people have asked for. And this, this isn't anything anyone asked for. I don't know if it's particularly controversial, but it's something I wanted to talk about. Uh, we have addressed things of this nature on the channel where uh, things that people in crowdfunding can uh, can learn from, mistakes people have made specifically. We talked about the, was it Saving Solo book where um, the customers weren't very happy when they finally received their copies. And here we have Allegiance Arts brand new crowdfunding campaign for the Saints, and it is not doing as well as some of their previous incarnations. I want to kind of talk how we got here. Now, full disclosure, normally I would bring Tim Lim in to talk about these because I, I do think that Tim and, well, mostly Tim because he's the campaign manager. He's the one that that um, basically makes the schedule for Common America and, and Black Ops, USAGI, gets everything printed and everything out. Not that Mark Pellegrini doesn't do, do any of that work, but Tim does a lot of that. Obviously, his creative partner, the writer on his books, is Mark Pellegrini. And Mark Pellegrini had a business relationship with Mitch and Elizabeth Breitweiser for Red Rooster. Now, the reason I initially backed Red Rooster was because Doug Ernst had read the script. I guess, from what I understand, that was the original Mark Pellegrini script. He said it was excellent. I went and backed the campaign, and then something changed along the way. I'm not really sure what it is. Mark is a contributor on the channel. But we, we don't really talk about that. We just kind of talk about comic book writing and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the most part. It sounds like, from what I understand, when Mark wrote the story, it was formatted to be like a graphic novel. And then it needed to be, I don't know, adjusted to be released like more episodic, kind of for the Walmart stuff that we're going to talk about here in a minute. Now, from everything I know, Mark was paid in full. He, he did the job he was contracted to do and... Their, their business dealings were above board and everything went, you know, as as it was supposed to. You know, he got his money, they got the work, and I guess they changed it afterwards. I don't personally know because I have not received Red Rooster. You say, Wes, you backed the comic book. I did back the comic book, but I realized somewhat early on that I did not think that this was – the Red Rooster campaign was going to be fulfilled in a timely manner – and I was already getting kind of turned off by the crowdfunding comics and a lot of the mistakes I was seeing. And I saw that they were offering refunds. And I'll, I'll say this. I got my refund in a very timely manner. The, the people that I, I dealt with were super duper cordial, really nice about it. I have no complaints about Red Rooster. I never read the book. I got a full refund. It, it could not uh, subvert my expectations because I had none because I ended up getting, getting my money back and I didn't end up uh, getting the book. So I cannot talk to the quality of the book or the perks. I've heard that some people are upset about a sketchbook, that they didn't feel it met the, the specifications or the quality that was kind of outlined in the campaign. I don't know. I didn't, I, I didn't or, order the sketch, sketchbook perk anyway, even if I did receive the book. So apparently there were some issues with what was received. Now, there have been plenty of people that are late, and this comic book ended up delivering, I think it was less than three hours, or three hours, three years from the time of the actual campaign on Indiegogo, speaking about Red Rooster. But he'd already given himself quite a bit of lead-up time. I believe it was, it was funded in August of 2018, and it was supposed to come out in March of 2019. I think most people kind of early on suspected or could kind of tell it wasn't going to come out on time, but that was happening with a lot of people. And for the most part, the people that the customers that are backing these campaigns and, and trying to, to help fund them have been pretty, pretty good about late comic books. There have been plenty of creators that have been late on their campaigns. As long as you fulfill the campaign in, in a decent enough time with a quality product, for the most part, they're forgiving. 
Now, some people, if you take too long, they're just not going to come back. But for the most part, the customer base itself is very forgiving on some mistakes. Now, we, we've seen a lot of uh, other mistakes. I remember when, when, um, when Richard did his Jawbreakers, the first campaign, I, I guess the packaging wasn't very good. And there were some mistakes made there. They didn't use the Gemini mailers. We don't really have those issues for the most part anymore. Like most of the, the big campaigns use the Doug to Naples standard where you have the customized box to where nothing gets gets uh, beat up like in transit. Me personally, my interest for the most part in the crowdfunded comics waned. Being overseas, it is very expensive. I'm also not the biggest fan of waiting around for years on a comic book, especially when it's like 50 pages. That's just me personally. Uh, I can imagine that it is, it is a hard time because you're not just writing the comic, illustrating the comic. You're doing all the marketing. You're doing the fulfillment. It is a big task to take on. You know, that's why I like to bring on Tim to talk about that because he's got it down to a science. So my personal interest in this stuff is Wayne. There was a time when I would back a campaign every month. But that was like well over three years ago. I haven't. I, I go. I do support some of my friends, and I. I just. I don't like to get into the drama, and there feels like there's way too much drama with the camp of uh, crowdfunded camp campaigns for the most part. So I let my friends, like you know Tim, obviously Fatal J. When Eric Kennedy does his uh, Arc Athena, he'll be on here to talk about it. Doug uh, Ernst. But all those people have contributed to the channel for the most part. Otherwise, I try not to wade into it just because um, it's not all that much fun. But I did want to point out some of the issues here. And it kind of all starts with, I guess, I don't know that the reason that the campaigns aren't as successful as the very first one is mostly I don't think it's because they were late. And I don't even know that it's the quality so much. I've heard a lot of people say they like the book. But I do think it's... A lot of the um, the backers felt like they maybe got taken advantage of because in the meantime, before their comics ever arrived, um, which was a, kind of a smart idea. Well, let me bring it up. Let me bring it up and show you guys. Give me a second. This is the Allegiance Arts website, and this is the campaign that's going on right now. It's called The Saints. And these are the other four like uh, titles that they have, Red Rooster, The Futurist, Nora Saga and Bass Reeves. They actually have some pretty good creators on these. I'm, I'll talk about that in a second. If you go in here to Store Locator and you want to find a store where these are located, you can see all this Walmart stuff. Walmart store number. And this book, these books are probably have more distribution than almost any comic book uh, on the market today. So they went out and they secured a deal with Walmart before they fulfilled the campaigns which is a smart move. That's a strategic move. There's, this is getting more distribution than probably any comic book in North America, really. You know, every town has one Walmart, at least, <laughs> if they don't have three or four. But there's, I believe there's a feeling among people that stuck around that their money and their campaign funds were used to secure this Walmart deal. I do not know that that's the case. I do not know Mitch or Elizabeth Brightways, or I've never been associated with Allegiance Arts. Uh, I don't know if that's the case, but that feels like that is what has turned some people off to these campaigns. So when you look at the very first campaign, Red Rooster, this isn't under Allegiance Arts because it didn't exist in it. This is that was created, I believe, a year afterwards. Mitch and Elizabeth Brightweiser, Red Rooster Golden Age. This is the the comic. It ended up taking about three years since after the campaign started, almost two years late as far as the um, the shipping date. It was supposed to come out in March 2019, and it came out earlier this year. But you can see it was massively successful. The almost 3,600 backers and almost $200,000 in total. That is a very successful crowdfunding campaign. That 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 is an enormous amount of interest for the first book. I imagine a lot of people will have to work years upon years establishing their audience and um, putting out quality product before they can even sniff that number. So that is, is a good way to, to start out. And you would have figured, because I believe he, he'd already promised a sequel to this. We were also supposed to get some type of uh, like the first chapter of another series. So this one was 
was completed, at least the initial campaign was completed in 2018. I'm not sure when they actually shut it down in full, but afterwards they generated another $30,000. Very successful. So their next campaign under Allegiance Arts, and this does not have a Mitch Breitweiser written or illustrated comic book on it, but it did about a quarter of the backers, and this is finishing in December 2019, so this is well after Red Rooster has missed its uh, fulfillment date, and about like 18%, not 18, but almost a quarter of, um, of the, the backers' quarter of the money generated for this, this pack of books, and these are the books that also went out to Walmart from Legion's Arts, and they have some pretty good creative teams on them. Uh, here on the Futurist, this is the, the first comic we are seeing um, some of these samples from, from Mitch Breitweiser. And you got uh, Patrick Styles, Butch Goosey, Mitch and Elizabeth Breitweiser on colors, Eric Weathers on letter, Bass Reeves, one of my favorite uh, writers. I'm going to mess his name up, but it's uh, Kevin Grievix, or is it Gervis? Something like that. He's a really good writer. He's done a lot of cool stuff. I know he's done some screenplays. I think he's done some work in television as well. Really good writer. Um, not as familiar with David Williams. Uh, Kelsey Shannon, another good artist who's done uh, some ca crowdfunding campaign work, Eric Weathers. And then um, Nora's Saga was Blake Northcott. She was a, an up-and-comer when this kind of happened or started out. She ended up doing some work with Sean Gordon Murphy on his, uh, like, White Knight universe after this at DC Comics. And then um, I'll, if you, if you want to check out a really cool Blake Northcott comic, I don't know if she's doing comics anymore. I haven't heard much of her lately. But her um, executive assistant, Iris, from Aspen Comics is really badass. If you can find that comic, definitely check it out. It's worth your time. And then Kelsey Shannon was doing all the art and colors here with Eric Weathers on, on letters. So some pretty decent talent here. Maybe not written and illustrated by, by Mitch Breitweiser, but we, we've got some, some recognizable names and some really uh, good, good comic book talent on these. And it looks like at this point people had already... I don't know, started to lose faith that maybe their funds weren't being used the way that they initially anticipated them to be used for the Red Rooster to fulfilling the campaign. And then let's that gets us to the to the third campaign that they've done, the second one with Allegiance Arts. And this one's The Saints, and this has a really good writer on it. Uh, we're, I don't know, it probably is a 60-day campaign, so we're almost 10 days into it. And there's only 143 backers and like, less than $8,500. That's an enormous drop-off. It feels um, like there's been a lo large amount of, uh, like the customer trust is gone or something like that. So these are some of the, the risks that you take if you don't kind of fulfill your campaign on time or, and maybe you do some outside interest. Like I said, I don't know that they actually did what anyone suspects they did. I, I, if they've talked about it, I haven't heard it. I, I'm not all that much in the know here. I can just see what, uh, just talk about what I'm seeing. Down here, we got Mike Barron. I don't know who Christian Rosado, but they're calling him breakthrough talent, breakout talent. So I don't know if he's done another crowdfunding campaign or maybe this is his first, uh, like, big work that he's done. Once again, uh, letters by Eric Weathers. Mike Barron's a great writer. He's done some really cool stuff. Uh, some of his Star Wars adaptations of like the original EU stuff when they adapted into comic books is like really awesome. If you can get your hands on some of that Mike Barron Star Wars comics, if you haven't read them yet, absolutely worth it. Really good stuff. He also did Badger. It's kind of like a cult classic comic, a little bit ahead of its time. If you can find Badger, and you can probably find those in the dollar bins in your comics or in your comic shop, go check those out. You'll love it. Like Mark, Mike Barron. Mike Barron is a really good writer and they're just um, the interest has waned in what Mitch and Elizabeth are kind of um, are putting out substantially. Now they haven't been prolific as far as their production. We had red rooster you know, took quite a while to fulfill. I'm not sure if this one is fulfilled. I'm imagine it was cause I do know that these comic books were in Walmart. I saw the in displays on Twitter. So I imagine all of these got fulfilled in, in the um, – I never heard anyone say that the, the art in any of these was bad or the, the, the writing was bad. But I, it feels like they kind of – I don't know. 
whatever goodwill that that their customers had for them, it's obviously gone at this point. So, what what can you learn from something like this? If you're going to do a crowdfunding campaign, you should probably put the campaign first. You probably shouldn't be distributing the book that people pre-ordered and paid a pre-order fee for in a premium for. It would have been cheaper to buy these books in Walmart when you think about the shipping and all that. You, you need to put those customers that that um, that um backed that campaign and funded it. They have to be first. They can't feel like they were second-class citizens on a book that they were the ones that ended up funding. And uh, it feels like it's kind of blown up their face. Now, the Walmart deal could be exceptionally lucrative. And they might not even need to do these crowdfunding campaigns. That might just be to generate interest and engage interest in the in the series for future distribution in Walmart. I don't know. Like I said, I have no relationship with either of the Brightweisers. They seem like nice people, especially Elizabeth Brightweiser. I have no relationship with Allegiance Arts. I know Mark, and he, he did some work for him, but it's, that's all I know is that he got paid and it was done in full. And Doug initially liked the, uh, the script that they changed. Otherwise, I, I don't really have a dog in this fight. But it, it, you don't want to squander the goodwill of the people that are backing you, especially on a crowdfunding campaign. I'm surprised more people haven't gone the Tim Lim, uh, Mark Pellegrini kind of iconic blueprint that they've laid out where these are like pre-funded book. Like they're pre-orders is what I wanted, wanted to say, where the book's already done. It's already printed. It's waiting to be distributed kind of thing. That's what they've done with their Common America Black Hop books for several several issues now. There are other people that have done that. Doug Ernst, he did he even forego he he just didn't do a crowdfunding campaign. He just printed out all the all the books and put them on the iconic website. And it sounds like people were uh, were very happy with what they got. So we've definitely come a long ways since Richard had his issues uh, with the distribution of Jawbreakers number one. This is definitely um it's a it's something to learn from if you're going to do crowdfunding comics. It's something to, that you should take heed of. That you you don't want to squander the goodwill and faith of your customer base and string them along while it feels like you're, you know, uh, taking care, taking care of other customers with the product that they felt like they um that they funded to begin with. So I thought this was interesting. I I hope um, I hope they can kind of get the goodwill of their customers back. Hopefully this fulfills on time. They can start, you know, building back their name up. But um feels like it'll probably take a while. These what is it? Um trust takes a long time to earn and in you know seconds to lose kind of kind of thing. So just another one of the reasons that I kind of lost interest, you know, just besides all the drama, felt like there was always um issues fulfilling the campaigns and just being overseas, stuff would get lost and you know, it always ended up being so expensive. So I might start looking back into crowdfunding stuff if they have the digital option available. I kind of, I, I do enjoy that, but I don't know if I could, I can just keep, ship, I can, you know, throw out $65 on speculative for, for comics. I think I'm still, I'm still on the hook for Sovereign. I don't even remember who the creator is on that. I just remember I liked his art a lot, but I don't, I'm never going to get that comic book. <laughs> and it's you know you can only be burned so many times. Some people can be burned more than others. Me personally, you know, I got three kids and I uh, I just can't be that loose with the money. My wife will kill me. So just thought it was interesting just seeing the um, just seeing the latest campaign pain by Allegiance Arts after there were some people it appears a lot of their customers were not so happy with the way that they handled the campaign and their Walmart deal. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.